All right, in section 1.7, we're going to look at number line. So let's review that. I hope it is a review for the most part. If we have a one-dimensional one number line, the center is 0, and anything to the right of that are positive numbers. And anything to the left of zero are negative numbers. And the key to this is, as you go left to right, the numbers get bigger. So I'll sometimes have students make the mistake that Let's look at minus 7 and minus 2. Sometimes they'll say, well, minus 7 is bigger because 7 is a bigger number, but that's not true. On the number line, 2 is to the right of minus 7. So minus 2 would be bigger than minus 7. In fact, 0 is to the right of minus 2. So 0 would be bigger than minus 2. And then obviously, any positive number would be bigger than 0, and you can keep going and you can see how things are going to fit on the number line. In fact, let's take a look at this. So this symbol, the less than symbol, will always, I like to think of it as a mouth. So it always wants to eat the bigger meal. So you're gonna have something smaller on the left of it and something bigger on the right of it. Okay, that's called the less than symbol. All right, and in this section, oh, I should also mention if you go way, way out here to the right, you will reach what we call infinity. So we use a kind of a sideways 8 for that, and it just means a really big number. If you go way, way, way out to the left of the number line, you reach negative infinity. So it has a negative sign to indicate that you've gone to the left of 0. Okay, so there's two types of notations that we want for this section. One is called interval notation. Interval notation will either use parentheses and then a small number, so the smallest answer that will work, and then the next number will be the big number. That's the biggest number that can work for the inequality. Or we might also have brackets. So, and we'll kind of talk about each of these as we go. What's the difference between using brackets and parentheses? But that's interval notation. And we always write left to right, small, big. Then we have set builder notation. Set builder notation is going to have, it has wavy brackets, and it starts with x. So this says x can be anything. So if we say x can be anything in the number line, it would include the entire number line. So it would go from minus infinity to infinity. It includes everything. But then we have this vertical line. This vertical line stands for with the following restriction. So now we're going to actually um, say, okay, it's not all, not every x can work we're going to restrict the values of x that work for the problem. Okay, so to, to take this interval notation and to transform it into set builder notation, we have to understand what is the picture that this interval notation is, is stating. Well, if we start with the number line, put 0 right in the center, this says we're starting at minus infinity. So we are starting here. And minus infinity is way over here on the left of the number line. And then we have a 0, and it says we're going to stop at 0. So what we would do is we would, we would shade everything in between these two things. So we would shade from minus infinity all the way up into 0, and we're going to stop there. 
Now this parenthesis means that zero will not work, so we're going to use a parenthesis to block off the zero. And in fact, that actually gives us the answer to the bottom part, D. So we've got the drawing correct. But now how do I how do I transform this into set builder notation? Well, this is basically saying that X, which is the shaded region of the number line that works, has to be smaller than zero. So anything smaller than zero to the left of zero. So to write that, we would say this. X just has to be smaller than zero. And if if they had used a bracket here, I'd use a bracket here, and I would use a equal to bar right here. So uh, let's say, let's imagine, what if they had it like this? Minus infinity to zero with a bracket. The bracket means that x could equal zero. So, so in this case, we would have had um, x has to be less than or equal to zero. So that's the difference. A bracket will get this equal to bar and vice versa. So if I, in future problems, if I have this equal to bar, we'll use a bracket to contain our x values. Okay, problem two is really similar. It says we are starting at minus infinity and then x will stop at 5.1. So if we were to draw this, zero is right in the center, and 5.1 will be somewhere to the right of zero because it's positive. And this says we're starting at minus infinity, minus infinity, which is way over here to the left, and we are going to shade everything from minus infinity all the way up until 5.1. And we use a parenthesis here, so we're not going to include 5.1. So we use a parenthesis to block it off. Give us our answer for the bottom part. Looks like C is going to be it. And just like before, in set builder, we're going to say X just has to be smaller than 5.1. That's how quick these can go. Uh, let's show you what these would look like in um, interval notation. So this one would say we're starting at 5.1 and we're going to positive infinity. So this would be the case that x is bigger than 5.1. This one is all real numbers, so it would be minus infinity to infinity. And it would show up um, like this in set builder. This one's the one we had. D, this one's interesting, it's pretty close to what we had. This would be I start at minus infinity and I stop at 5.1, but it has a bracket. So in set builder notation, it would be x is smaller than or equal to 5.1. This one starts at 5.1 with a bracket and goes to positive infinity, or it's x bigger than or equal to 5.1. So notice the difference in these symbols here, less than, greater than. This one's interesting. This is all things work except for 5.1. So we use this symbol here. This is not equal to. So uh, we're going to exclude 5.1, but anything else would work. So it would look like it. This one's kind of interesting. It gives us a more complicated set builder notation. It would look like this. We start at minus infinity. We go to 5.1, and then we go to positive infinity. So we would start at minus infinity, go to 5.1 with a parentheses, then union. This is the union symbol, capital U. Because we have two sections now. Then we start at 5.1 again, and then we go to positive infinity. So those would be all the possible answers. The one that we wanted was, of course, this one, minus infinity to 5.1, or x is smaller than 5.1. And problem three, uh, this is where, so in the first two we had no arithmetic, no algebra to do. Well, now we'll have to start doing some algebra. So we have a little bit of arithmetic here. And so our goal is pretty similar to just an algebra problem. Our goal is to have x on the left or right by itself, no number in front of it, and then an inequality symbol. So there's five possibilities, less than, 
less than equal to, greater than, greater than equal to, or not equal to. So one of those five symbols, and then just one number on the right. That's our goal. And just like before, one of the first lectures I talked about, you can do anything you want to the left side as long as you do the same thing to the right side. So we're just going to account for all of our moves and make it sure it balances, and then um, we should get the answer. So if we look at a problem like 3, the first thing we're going to want to do is get rid of that negative 8. To get rid of a negative 8, we add 8 to the left side. But if I add 8 to the left, I have to add 8 to the right. And then we have, let me write it over here, 3x, 8's gone, greater than or equal to 18. Now we say this 3 is being multiplied into the x. To undo multiplication, we use division. Divide by 3, divide by 3. Notice how I'm doing the same thing to both sides. We're left with x greater than or equal to 6, and now we have it in our we have our goal complete. We have x by itself, no number in front, the inequality symbol greater than or equal to, and then one number, 6, on the right. And in interval notation, so notice this is set builder. They want interval notation. Interval notation is either a parentheses or a bracket. The smallest x can be, the biggest x can be, and then either a uh, parentheses or a bracket. So uh, you could have four different possibilities here, depending on how the parentheses and brackets are um, mixed together. So we would have, um, in this one, because of this equal to bar, there is going to be a bracket. But let's look at this one on the number line. So this says x must be bigger than or equal to 6. So we are going for bigger numbers than 6. So the answer to the picture is a. And if you have the number line, that's when you should go back and do your interval notation, because all you have to do is record what you see left to right. So the first number you see is 6 with a bracket. So the first thing I write is 6 with a bracket. And then it's going to go until positive infinity. So this arrow indicates it keeps going. So the next thing I'm going to write is infinity. Now with infinities, you always use parentheses. So you don't have to ever think about this. Minus infinity gets a bracket. So if I'm starting it to the left, it gets a parentheses. And if I have positive infinity on the right, you also use a parentheses. So it's always parentheses for those infinity symbols. And that's it. So just a few algebra steps, and we would have the solution to this one. Okay, problem four is pretty similar, but we have a negative number. So we have negative 3 being multiplied into x. So to get rid of that minus 3, let's uh, do this down here. We have minus 3x less than or equal to 12. And we are going to divide by negative 3. So divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3. And this is the only rule we have to remember, and it can be tricky sometimes. But if you multiply or divide by a negative number, flip the symbol. Okay, so that's the only thing we have to remember with inequality algebra is that if we are working with negative numbers, multiplying or dividing, we're just going to flip the symbol. So this is going to become x less than equal to becomes greater than equal to, and 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. So this says we want x to be bigger than or equal to minus 4. Because of this equal to sign, we will start at minus 4 with a bracket, and then we'll go anything bigger than that all the way to infinity. So to write this, we would just record what we see. The first thing we see is minus 4 with a bracket. And then the last thing we see is infinity, and it has to be uh, encapsulated with a parenthesis. So the negative numbers that got you there, you're going to have to flip that symbol. Okay, number 5. We are going to uh, start with a little bit of arithmetic again. So we don't like this 2 here, so let's subtract 2 from both sides and get minus x over 4 is greater than, so the 2's go away on the left, 7 take away 2 is 5. Okay, now we would say this x is being divided by 4, so let's multiply by 4 to cancel it and multiply 4 
on the right. So these fours on the left cancel, you're left with minus x is greater than 20. And notice, I multiplied by positive 4, so I'm not flipping anything because that was a positive multiplier. But now we look in here and say, okay, I've got really minus 1 times x. Minus 1 times x. To get rid of that minus 1, we divide by minus 1. But if I divide the left by minus 1, I divide the right by minus 1. And since now I'm dividing by a negative number, we're going to have to flip that symbol. The minus 1's cancel. You flip the symbol to less than, and 20 divided by 1 is 20 with a minus now because of this minus there. So this says x should be less than minus 20. So we start at minus 20, and less than would mean to the left, and it's unbounded, so it's going to go to minus infinity. So now that I know that E is the right picture, I can fill in the interval notation. First thing I see, left to right, is negative infinity. The next thing I see is minus 20 with a parenthesis. So again, you record these left to right just by looking at your number line drawing. Okay, in problem six, we're going to introduce now a compound inequality. So compound inequalities have more than one inequality symbol. In this case, there's two, two less than symbols. And so what you get is you get a left-hand side, some inequality symbol, you get a middle, some inequality symbol, and then you get a right-hand side. Now, if we've done this correctly, this should still go small to big. So these things should line up as we read them left to right. The smallest should be over here, and the biggest should be on the right. Okay, so the, the way to handle this is our goal, let's first start with a goal, is we want one number on the left, some inequality symbol, just x by itself with no number in front in the middle, some inequality symbol, and then one number on the right. So that's our goal, and the same rule in algebra is going to apply. So we're going to start with the middle. So we're starting in the middle with the goal of making the middle just x. And then we're going to um, do anything we need to. but also do those things to both left-hand side and right-hand side. So one of the first lectures I told you, in an equation we have a left side or right side. Whatever you do to the left, you must do to the right. Add 7 here, add 7 here. Multiply by 2 here, multiply by 2 here. This is the same thing. So we're going to start in the middle, but now I have to consider all three sides. So whatever I do to the middle, add 2. I'm going to add 2 to the left side and the right side. I can multiply, I can divide, all those things. So we look at this one and we would say, okay, there's a plus 3 in the middle that we don't want. All we want in the middle is that x. So we're going to get rid of that 3 by subtracting it. But here's now where I have to say, okay, if I subtract 3 from the middle, I have to subtract 3 from the left, I just have to subtract 3 from the right. And that's it. Just do everything to all the sides. Minus 4 minus 3 is minus 7. Less than symbol. What's left in the middle is just x now. Less than symbol. And 1 take away 3 is minus 2. Okay, so this says x has to be sandwiched between minus 7 and 2. So minus 7 would be here. Minus 2 would be here. And so the answer would be, I start at minus 7, and I go until I get to minus 2, and I stop. And we use parentheses because there's no equal to bars on those less than symbols. So the interval notation would be minus 7 to minus 2. And notice that it is lined up perfectly, left to right, small to big. Okay, problem 7 is similar. We're going to look at the middle. 
and we, we're not going to want that minus 2 there, so let's add 2. But then I have to add 2 to the right, and I have to add 2 to the left. Minus 5 plus 2 is minus 3. Less than symbol stays the same. Minus 2 is gone. I just have 3x left in the middle. Less than equal to 6. Okay, now once again, starting from the middle, we don't like this multiply by 3, so we're going to divide by 3, divide by 3, and divide the right side by 3. This would be minus 1 less than x less than equal to 2. So on the number line, minus 1 is about here, 2 would be right here, and we are starting at minus 1 with a parenthesis because there's no equal to bar, and we're going all the way to 2 with a bracket because there is an equal to bar on this one right here. So we use a bracket. So we can just recreate this exactly like I have it here, minus 1 with a parentheses, comma, the biggest it can be is 2 with a bracket. That's 7. Okay, 8 is pretty much the same, but we've got uh, maybe a few more steps to do. So we look at the middle, and we say, okay, we don't like that plus 2, so subtract 2, subtract 2, subtract 2. Notice that I'm using those inequality symbols as where the left and middle and right are lined up. 5 take away 2 is 3, less than or equal to 3 over 4x, less than 8 take away 2 is 6. Okay, now there, we can do this in one step, but I'm going to show it in two. We're dividing by 4, so to get rid of that divide by 4, I'm going to multiply the middle by 4. But if I multiply the middle by 4, I have to multiply the left side by 4, I have to multiply the right side by 4. This would be 12. That 4 and that 4 cancel, so you're left with 3x. 6 times 4, 24. Okay, now we look at the middle and say, oh, I don't like that D times 3, so let's divide 3, divide 3, divide 3. We would get 4 is less than equal x is less than 8. Notice I'm... I'm doing positive multiplication, I'm doing positive division, so I didn't have to change these symbols at all. They're just going to stay exactly how they started because I did not use any negative multiplication or division. Okay, on the number line, 4 would be about here, 8 would be about here. They're lined up left to right, small to big. This starts at 4 with a bracket, and it goes to... 8 with a parenthesis because there's no equal to bar underneath it on this one. So we would have bracket 4 comma 8 parenthesis. Okay, 9 is really similar to something we saw in maybe a section or two back. And that is... Um, a section or two back, we said, okay, if I have x in an absolute value symbol, <clears throat> and it's equal some number, let's say 9, then we have to set up two equations. One is that x equals 9, and then the second one is x equals minus 9. So we said, okay, set up two equations, one where it's equal to the positive number, and one where it's equal to the negative number. For inequalities, you do the same thing. So let's say we have x less than some number k, you're also going to form two equations. One where all you do is drop these absolute value bars and have it exactly the same. X less than K, X less than K. The second thing is you draw, you keep the left-hand side the same, but now you flip the symbol and make K a negative. So that's how we're going to handle these absolute value inequalities. We're going to set up two problems. One where it looks exactly the same, and then one where we flip the symbol and change the sign on the number. So for this one, we would have 4x plus 4 over 3 less than 8. So notice that looks exactly the same as the starting point, just without those vertical bars. Then we're going to simultaneously solve 4x plus 4 divided by 3 is greater than minus 8. So notice we flipped the symbol and we changed 8 to minus 8. And now we solve them both simultaneously. So the first thing we're going to do is the left's being divided by 3. So to get rid of that 3, we're going to multiply by 3. 
But if I multiply the left side by 3, I have to multiply the right side by 3. Now, the nice thing about these problems is the steps will be exactly the same. You're just doing them twice. So if we did multiply by 3 in here, you multiply by 3 here, multiply by 3 on the far right side. These 3s will cancel. You're left with 4x plus 4 less than 24. And the 3s will cancel here and get 4x plus 4 greater than minus 24. Okay, then we come in here and say, I don't like that plus 4, so subtract it. Don't like that plus 4, so subtract it. We would get 4x less than 20. And 4x greater than negative 28. Last step. Multiply by 4, so divide by 4. Multiply by 4, so divide by 4. x less than 5 x greater than minus 7. Notice all my steps here, the, the multiply steps and the divide steps use positive numbers. Positive 3, positive 4. So because those were positives, I don't have to flip any symbols other than the initial flip just to set up the problem. So let's see in the number line what this means. We would have minus 7 is over here. Positive 5 would be somewhere over here and 0 in the middle. Okay, so this one says x should be smaller than 5. If x is smaller than 5, we're going to cap it at 5, and we want to go left, smaller than that. This one says x should be bigger than minus 7. Bigger than minus 7 goes to the right. So we are going to want to shade everything in between these two. We use parentheses because there's no equal to bars on these inequalities. So in interval notation, we start left to right at minus 7 and we stop at 5, both having parentheses. Okay, in problem 10, it's kind of deceptively simple, but it's, it is going to require a little bit of thought. So it says x bigger than 5. So just like before, we're going to have two equations. One, where we make x bigger than 5, and the second one, where we make x smaller than negative 5. So again, we set up two things. One looks exactly the same, we just drop the vertical bars, and the second one, you flip the symbol and you make the number a negative. You flip the sign, so if 5 is positive here, it becomes a negative there. Okay, now there's no algebra to do, there's, we've already got x number, x symbol number, x symbol number. So the last part of this is to put it on the number line. 0, and then we have minus 5 for this one and we have positive 5 for this one. Okay, let's start with this left one. x bigger than 5. x bigger than 5 would start at 5, and bigger than would go to the right. Let's look at this one on the right. This says x should be smaller than minus 5. Smaller than minus 5 goes to the left of minus 5. So notice this one, you've actually got two sections of the number line that work. So we're going to have to put two answers together. And the way we would write that is just, just write what you see in order from left to right. So the first thing we see is minus infinity. It gets a parenthesis because infinities always get parentheses. The next thing we see is minus 5 with a parenthesis because there was no equal to bar over here. Then we union that with the next thing I see is a 5 with the parentheses. And then the last thing I see is infinity. Infinities always get parentheses. You know, let's see what this really means. So let's pick some numbers and see if this is true. So let's say we pick minus 7. Minus 7 is in the blue region. So let's substitute minus 7 into this absolute value. Well, what absolute value does is it really asks how far away is the number from 0, so it doesn't care about minus signs. So it gets rid of this minus, and it makes minus 7 positive 7. And then we say, is positive 7 bigger than 5? And you say, that's true. Okay, now let's pick positive 7. Positive, the absolute value of positive 7, so I'm plugging it into this here. The absolute value of positive 7 is still positive 7, and is that greater than 5? That's true. Now, any number we pick that's not in the shade region should not work. So let's pick negative 3. Notice negative 3 is in between 0 and minus 5, so let's see if that's going to work. 
the absolute value of minus 3 is positive 3 is 3 bigger than 5 that is false so what we're really trying to find here are regions of the number line that are solutions to our inequality let's try one more let's try positive 3 so the absolute value of positive 3 would be positive 3 is that greater than 5 that one's also false so actually drawing the number line I think is really useful uh, because you can quickly see what numbers work and what don't and it makes it I, I would argue a little easier to get this because you're just recording things left to right um, as you go okay 11 uh, just like the other ones we've been doing so we've got 3x minus 9 greater than 15 so just remove the absolute value symbol for the first one so everything's exactly the same but then in the second one you keep the left hand side the same 3x minus 9 and now we flip the symbol and make 15 negative and solve so let's first add 9 add 9 add 9 add 9 so we get 3x is bigger than 24 and we get 3x is less than 9 take away 15 is minus 6. Now we say, okay, don't like that 3 in front, so divide by 3, divide by 3, divide 3, divide 3. This would be x bigger than 8. This one would be x smaller than negative 2. Draw your number line. Minus 2 is the smaller of these two numbers, then the next number is 8. This one says x bigger than 8. So we start at 8 with a parentheses because there's no equal to bar. Bigger than 8 would be to the right of 8. This one says x should be smaller than negative 2. So we start at negative 2. Smaller numbers than negative 2 are to the left. And now that we have this, we can record left to right minus infinity to the next number I see is minus 2, unioned with next number I see is 8 with a parentheses, last number we see is infinity with a parentheses. And so we've pretty quickly got it. Last problem in this section will also be similar. So we have 2x, just write whatever they give you, same symbol, Everything's the same except for the vertical bars. The absolute value bars are gone. Then, keep everything the same on the left. But now, flip the symbol and change the sign of the number. So if it's positive 4, make the second one a negative 4. And we solve. So the first thing we're going to do is we don't like to divide by 7. So let's multiply instead by 7. And we're going to do the same on left and right for both sides. These 7s will cancel. 2x plus 8 bigger than or equal 28. 2x plus 8 smaller than or equal to minus 28. Now, we don't want a plus 8 here, so we're going to subtract 8, subtract 8, subtract 8, subtract 8. 2x should be bigger than or equal to 20. 2x should be smaller or equal to minus 36. We don't like to multi we don't want this 2 in front, so we divide it out. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. X should be bigger than or equal to 10. X should be smaller or equal to minus 18. So on the number line, minus 18 is smaller, so we write it first. Then we see 10, positive 10. This says x should be bigger or equal to 10. So it can equal 10, so we use a bracket. But it can also be bigger than 10, so we go to the right all the way to infinity. This one should, says x should be smaller than, but it could be equal to negative 18. So we start at negative 18, and we want to include it, so we use a bracket. But then any number smaller than it, all the way to minus infinity. And once we have the number line correct, just record things left to right. First thing I see is minus infinity. Infinities always get parentheses. 
Next thing I see is minus 18 and it has a bracket. Union. The next number I see is 10 with a bracket. Comma, the last number we see is infinity with a parentheses. And that would do it for section 1.7.